Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Unboxing and Stuff. Today we're going to be taking a look at a Skytop Power 30 volt 5 amp DC power supply. So this thing's going to be pretty cool to check out. So let's go ahead and just get right into the box and see what it comes with. Alright, here we are getting into the box. Let's open it. First thing we have here is a, a user manual. Next we have a power cord. Next we have a, an assortment of different leads, which is nice. And finally, we have the actual unit itself. We have our power cord input on the back, cooling fan, a couple grates on either side just to let air flow through, some little feet on the bottom. And then on the front, we have our controls, which is not too many. You got your fine on this side for your voltage and your current, and you have coarse on this side for voltage and current. So let's go ahead and get this thing plugged in and our first set of testing that we're actually going to do on this is just verifying that what it is showing that's putting out that's actually coming out of the unit. And another thing that's actually in the box that I missed was a small pair of angled tweezers. So let's go ahead and get this thing set up. First thing we're going to do is go ahead and plug the cord in. And that's just going to go in the back here. Just like that back around and then we're going to go ahead and plug the power in and we're going to go ahead and take a look at it here turn it on and you can see the display lights up let's go ahead and peel this plastic off the screen there we go and so as you can see here we've got a course adjust here it's going to adjust our voltage rather quickly so according to the front here, we go all the way down on both fine and coarse and get down to zero volts. And we can move the fine up. We can dial that in the tenth of a volt there. We go all the way up on our coarse voltage. It actually goes to 35 volts. And that's the peak, 35.1 with the fine all the way up. So I also misspoke earlier. This is the PS2110 model. And this model is actually 0 to 35 volts and is capable of 0 to 10 amps. So just keep that in mind. Just wanted to make that correction before we move forward. Okay, now I have the two banana plugs plugged into the front and then the two alligator clips clipped onto my multimeter. So you can come over here and now we're going to go through the voltage range and see how that matches up compared to the voltage over there. So let's go ahead and start dropping down the fine. So it may stay at 35 at this point. So you can see over there, that was about a tenth of a volt change. So slowly work our way down to 30. Okay, and we're going to dial this back up so that it's exactly 30. Okay, let's go 25. And with the fine, you can see it's probably going to have a little bit of variation over the voltage range, but you can fine tune it. And I always recommend, if you're setting up a power supply of any kind, to set it up and then use a voltmeter to verify that whatever the displayed voltage is, is actually correct. Because you don't want to accidentally put the wrong voltage in to something. Okay, there's 20. Let's go 15. OK, 
Okay, and 10. All right, five. Perfect. And let's just go to one volt. There you go, that's pretty close. Okay, so as we saw here, the range of the voltage uh, seems to be pretty darn close. You can fine tune it in with a multimeter, but it gets you really close. So let's go ahead and preset this thing for 13.8. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and connect this up to some radios and do a little bit of testing and see how the amperage does. Okay, so here we have a CB radio that we're going to go ahead and hook up to do some testing with. And I'm going to go ahead and clip the ground over onto my black lead here and the hot lead over here to the red lead. So let's just go ahead and turn this on now. We have our voltage set. There we go. And uh, just so everyone knows, this radio is wired into a dummy load, so it's not actually going to go out over the air if or when we key up. So you can turn the squelch up just a little bit there. Okay, so you can see here, everything's functioning just fine. Now we're showing just over half an amp of current draw just for this radio to be on. So let's go ahead. So let's go ahead and clip on our clamp meter here. And I'm showing 0.46, so just under half an amp. So that's pretty darn close. So let's go ahead and I'll just do a channel right in the middle, do channel 20. Let's go ahead and key the radio up. And we're showing 1.43 amps up there and 1.38 amps down here on the meter. So that's within margin of error. I would consider that pretty darn good and pretty trustworthy. Uh, let's see if we adjust this, if anything happens. Okay, there you go. So this was something I was wondering about. And you can reduce the amperage down enough to the point where things aren't going to operate. So you can you can limit that current there all the way to the point of failure like you saw there. And then boom, as soon as we get within our voltage range, everything comes back up. Okay, so now we've seen that it works with this radio. Let's try something a little bigger that I'm assuming is not going to work, but we'll see. I imagine it's going to draw more than the 10 amps this guy's capable of putting out when I key it up, but we're going to give it a shot anyway. So let's go ahead and switch over to that. Okay, for this one, we go ahead, got the power off again, and we go ahead and take off these front connector lead covers. For this one, I'm going to go ahead and actually put it directly onto the post.
Okay, so those are in place. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and turn the power supply back on. And keep in mind, this radio is a 100 watt radio. It is going into a 100 watt dummy load, so none of this RF will be going out to the air. I programmed in two test frequencies. I have well, the first one here, the Moon LP, which is low power, and then I have the Moon HP, which is high power. So you can see right this one, we're already pulling one amp just to, to wake up on this radio. So let's go ahead and do our low power test. And you can see right there, 9.35 amps for this to transmit. So I'm guessing, hypothetically, it should power off when we do the high power test. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do our high power test and we'll just see what happens with this unit over here. Okay, so you can see that it, it transmits for about half a second and then that power supply is just like, nope, can't do it. So this just reverts back to, nope, I don't have enough juice to transmit on high power, which is what I would expect. So let's go back to the moon, low power. And there you go, we can see our 9.35 amps drawing on this. And I can't remember exactly off the top of my head how many, this is a 5710 radio. They put out, I can't remember if it's like 10 or 20 watts on low power. Um, I'll have to look into that. Um, and I know you can't adjust it a little bit, but uh, so, so there we go. So we've, we've proved the point that this thing can run up to that 10 amp max. And if you drop the amperage down, you can actually drop it so that whatever the device is uh, will actually power off when it's below the power threshold that it's capable of running on. So now that we've seen this thing work, there's one more test I wanna do, and then we'll wrap up the video. Okay, for our final piece of the pie here, what we're gonna do is we're going to first separate these leads and we're gonna go ahead and plug in our ground and our positive. We're then gonna once again connect those up to our multimeter here. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and look for our AC ripple. So it looks like there's really not any AC ripple popping up when I actually change from each setting it should show up in there pretty strong if it is. So that's great. You don't, when you have a DC power supply, you really don't want AC ripple. The, there's a, an acceptable amount of AC ripple. Uh, I can't remember exactly how many millivolts it is off the top of my head, but it's, it's a decent amount. Um, but the fact that this is not showing up with a bunch of AC ripple is really great because that means that you can trust this power supply a lot more and it's not gonna create and generate a bunch of noise on uh, whatever it is you're powering up. So that's a big win for this guy right here. Okay, so now that we've done some testing and you guys have seen how this power supply works, let's talk a little bit about who this power supply is for. Like, why would you wanna buy this? What good is it? Um, you know, is it is it really worth even getting? And shorter answer is yes, it is worth getting, I think, because it functions the way it's supposed to. Uh, and as far as who should get it, really anybody. I mean, it just depends on what you want to do. If you need anything requiring between zero and 30 volts uh, for testing things or for charging things or you know any number of different options, uh, something like this is great. This has been on my to get list for quite some time now. And yeah, you can run lower power radios with this unit. Uh, just fine as you saw there, you know, if you're running a CB on it, that would be no problem You could run that thing easy. Uh, you're running something like this on low power So, you know, like I said somewhere between 10 and 20 watts, I believe uh, Yeah, that that works just fine. So form factor wise This thing is really cool because it's so small. That's probably my my favorite thing about it overall is uh, you know for work I have other 
types of power supplies that are uh, older style and they're about, you know, I don't know, 10 times the size of this and they weigh about, you know, 60 pounds and they're heavy. And uh, as far as for lighter work, which is, you know, most of the things that I would do on a bench top, uh, something like this really is nice. It's easy to move around and this would be easy to take with you somewhere. You could throw it into a truck and take it somewhere and uh, play with it out in the field. And so that's, that's a pretty big win for this one, in my humble opinion. Now, is this a lab quality machine? Maybe not, but is it high enough quality for the field type work that I do? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think it, I think it does what it's supposed to, and it's at a really reasonable price, uh, which is uh, a nice thing for consumers like myself. So, um, I've told you all about the things I do like about it. If I had to choose something I didn't like, which none of it's really bugged me so far, but the, I have to say if, if I had to pick something, the worst thing about this is probably just these little knobs here. You know, they're, they're just kind of cheap plastic. Um, but I didn't have any problems with them. You know, that's just the one thing is I can feel it's a cheap plastic. Um, but it, it still works absolutely fine. So, uh, overall, I definitely would say I'm happy with this thing. If you're looking for a power supply to uh, do smaller bench top type things, I definitely think this is something worth considering. Uh, like I said, I always recommend, no matter what voltage you're using, verify that the voltage that's displayed on the screen is actually what's coming out of the unit by using a high quality uh, multimeter of some kind that you know is accurate and reliable. And then you shouldn't have any problems at all uh, you know there's a lot of other little things that you could do with this machine too that I, I didn't talk about but uh, anything that's below 30 volts if you had some sort of a lithium battery that was too low for the charger to pick up you can use units like this to kind of bring those back by just giving them just a little touch of voltage which raises it up just off the floor but keep in mind I would definitely do some research don't just jump into doing stuff like that because you think you can make sure you know what you're doing and that you're doing it correctly because it can be also very dangerous if you're not doing things correctly so voltage in general can be very dangerous uh, if you're not using it correctly so so one other thing I noticed about this is it also appears to have a variable speed fan that actually when you're not drawing any power or much power will actually go down to completely silent and as you're drawing more it ramps up so that way it can keep the components cool on the inside which that's a nice feature so that if it's if you're using it on your uh, workbench but not full-time pulling power out of it it's not going to be screaming with a fan uh, just because it's on i do also like the display that's easy to read nice and clear uh, and with it being lighted like this it's, it's easy to see even from a, a distance so that's pretty neat as well so another thing to keep in mind is Skytop Power does make several different models. Like I said, this is the PS2110, which is a 0 to 35 volt and 0 to 10 amps. They also make a model that is the same voltage but goes 0 to 5 amps. And then they also make a model that goes 0 to 72 volts and 0 to 5 amps. So that could be pretty useful if you're running anything in the 48 volt area or something like that. Uh, I can see that being handy. But uh, I think that's about it at this point in time. If you guys have any questions about this stuff or anything that you'd like me to test out or see if I can make something happen, uh, let me know. You know, I'd be interested to know if you guys had any other cool testing ideas uh, that I could do with this machine down the road. But anyways, at this point in time, I think I have to say I would definitely recommend this machine if it's something you're looking for as far as just a small affordable power supply that you can do quite a bit of different stuff with. I think this is a very good mix. So hit me up in the comments. Let me know if there's anything else you guys want to know about. And I think that wraps it up for this video. So thank you for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.